St. Matthew's Church to do the invocation. Let us pray. Lord God, you call your people to honor those in authority. Help us to elect trustworthy leader, leaders, to participate in wise decisions for our common life, and to serve our neighbors in this community. Bless all the leaders of our land, especially this board, that we may be at peace among ourselves and a blessing to others. Amen. 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 Thank you. We like to say we make wise decisions, and every once in a while we have some people disagree with us. That's why we pray about it. We <laughs> do. Okay, we all rise to the pledge. Carol, you ready? Seconded to approve the minutes of the February 3rd, 2015 regular meeting. Everyone had a chance to look at it. Anyone wanting to make any changes? Discussing anything? Okay, everybody's happy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> Next, we have public comment. <coughs> Anyone would like to make public comment? Please. <coughs> My name is Bill Littleton, 3827 Mac Road in Bridgeport. I have a problem with a, a lady next door that has an old motor home. It's been sitting there for eight years. And so I thought I went to the right authorities in Bridgeport about four years ago now. And it seems as though they warned her come up to citation time and nothing's been done that I that I could discover. And I was wondering what Bridgeport could do about that. It don't run. It hasn't had a plate on it. Of course I don't care about plates. It's got to run though according to the ordinance I, I understand. And so that's why I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. like to make public comment? Would anyone else like to make public comment? And one last time. Anyone like to make, else like to make public comment? Hearing none, public comment is now closed. We move to unfinished business. <coughs> uh, one item, the fire department station upgrades. Who moved that? Move to approve the building and grounds committee recommendation upgrade to the fire station. Support. Motion has been made and supported to approve the upgrades to the fire station <coughs> as recommended by the building and grounds committee.
so when we first uh, looked at the special assessment, we had planned on doing a complete renovation on the building, and that's what we budgeted for with the 10-year assessment. Uh, since then, we're taking a step back from that, and we're only looking at performing those repairs and updates that absolutely need to be done. Uh, so for instance, the floor grates that were original and rusted out and, and failing, replace those. Uh, windows that are leaking or have been having issues with for several years, replace those. <coughs> Upgrade the lighting in the station. Um, actually, has a payback on it, as well as uh, put in a fuel-efficient boiler and an HVAC system. And so, just looking at what we have to this spring, we're looking at having a quote done. Instead of taking the hose tower down and doing the major structural repairs that the engineering firm recommended, we're going to wait on those uh, because they're not critical today. But we will have the masonry work repaired. It needs to be done so that the, out, the brick on the outside of the building uh, continues to last. So just those items that we absolutely need to get done is what we're planning for for 2015. All of this was budgeted when we set up the new fund for the assessment. Uh, the amount for the building was included in the for doing today. So there's nothing, nothing new that wasn't planned. Seconded to approve the building and grounds committee recommended upgrades to the fire station. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Hearing none. Okay, now I did new business. Uh, we have an agenda item, the little free library, and the Carmen Sasha. Sasha, yes, Sasha. hi, good evening. Um, my name is Carmen Sachuk. I am a member of the Bertrand Rotary and I am also a librarian over at the Fleshner Memorial Library in Bertrand. I'm here tonight to talk to you about Little Free Libraries. It all started with uh, an article in the Rotary Magazine um, that outlined the idea of putting Little Free Book Exchange libraries into communities. In our Rotary meeting, we discussed it and we had started talking about um, doing it before we knew it, just talking about it, we had passed the idea. We had a member of our board, would you like to look at these? I don't know, am I allowed to get close to you? Just <laughs> 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 um, A member of our group is also a builder and he donated the wood on the spot and we had enough wood to build four libraries with the intention of putting one in Birch Run, and we have it up and going near the gazebo, and one in Bridgeport, one in Tama, and one on the east side of I-75 in Birch Run somewhere. We haven't made the right connection and spot for it yet. Our library was dedicated in honor of a little girl who passed away at a young age. Um, her name's Ashley Muhlenbeck. We had done a project as a Rotary Club for a butterfly house because butterflies are one of her most favorite things. So our, our little free library is decorated with butterflies and it's got that <coughs> sort of theme. Our community came together, a lot of teachers remembered who she was and, and people knew that we were going to dedicate this little free library. They brought books. We had little um, dedication plates made up and they were available for people to write in memory of, and they could include a loved one of theirs that may have passed early. Um, we had about 100 people or a little more attend the ceremony. It was beautiful. There was a dedication and a prayer and face painting and singing, and it was a really nice, um, a nice dedication ceremony. Uh, it's been a year and six months since we almost, since we've dedicated it. Uh, we've had very good success with it. There hasn't been any vandalism. There are several people in the community that keep an eye on it. Plus, um, I'm like the warden of it. I go back and forth just to make sure there's enough books. So many books were donated at the ceremony that I have two big um, boxes at, at Fleshman Memorial Library, four books that have been signed that I can use to replace but I haven't needed to replace more than twice because people 
are bringing books. They're filling out their own dedication things to people that, that they have um, had loved that have lost and died. But you don't have to do it that way. It could be a living memorial as well. But um, we have the wood. We would love to place, a, place one in your community in conjunction with maybe your park um, committee or, or another group of people. The best is to get as many people on board with this as possible because then you have more eyes in the community that are going to watch this little free library. It's been my experience that the people that use it are usually people with kids that either can't get into the library when the library is open, or they're taking a walk and they're or they're getting a pizza because ours is real close to the pizza, and the little kid will run out and get books and come back. Even in the winter, there's little footprints going back and forth to our little free library. Um, I I would love to work with your community on getting one place here, and it's a great community builder. Do you have any questions for me? Um, you would, <coughs> excuse me, we got quite a, quite a bit of literature from yes, you, there those are giving us and all that. Um, you mentioned the issue of, you know, everybody knows obviously that we have a great board township library. Yes. And you made comment about how that kind of thing. You might elaborate on that a little bit, mainly for these people that didn't read all the stuff that we did. Okay. Um, the Little Free Library is run completely by people, volunteers. It's not a government um, library like your Bridgeport Library is. It's, it's always open. It's always there. It's, it's run on the condition of you take a book, you bring a book kind of thing. It could be the same book coming back, or it could be one that you have read previously and you would like to just share it with somebody else. Um, there's no rivalry or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Competition between the regular public library and a little free library. I think you'd said in there too, and then one of the things that I kind of brought to mind as I was starting to read it is the issue of so what do you do with the, with the jerks of the world when we have one or two of them? may want to cause damage or you said you know, a lot of people have that concern. Um, yes, there's always going to be that person out there. Um, in the packet, uh, item number, in the packet, item number three, I think it is, talks about where you locate your library is very important. In a well-lit area that is seen by many people um, is key. And you will keep down your vandalism just because people know that other people in the community have eyes on it, that it is a treasure to the community, and that it is something that will be known if it's destroyed or, or vandalized. Um, the way that the library is designed, the, it's got plexiglass instead of regular glass. If it breaks, you just zip another piece of plexiglass in there. Uh, there's nothing. You don't put on big knick-knacky things that could be broken off or twisted or, or defaced in that way. Um, your planning of it is, is really important. When you set it up, let it be known to everybody in the community. Have a, have a gathering, have something so that everybody knows this is a gift to the community. It belongs to everyone. And you'll have more people that take ownership of it that will keep an eye on what's going on to it. And that's, prevention is about, that's all, you know, the location and lights and, and giving the community ownership of it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? <coughs> Any questions? I was just trying to let her know that I did read that stuff. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, Chuck and 
setting up a little library. So. <laughs> little free. Little, free. Little, little people free library. <laughs> I'll second that. Okay, We got a canoe launch going. Um, I can tell you where we're at. Hoffman Park, and at the canoe in time, anybody that wants to give some feedback as to what they'd like to see, or you can contact Bill following the meeting, and you can do what you ever want to do now. If you, um, you want to say that's fine. As you know, last year we applied for two grants for a canoe kayak launch. Um, here in Bridgeport at two different locations. We are granted one through the DNR Trust Fund and I, we're simply reapplying for the other one. Um, there's some things in the DNR Trust Fund that if you're below a certain dollar amount, then you're almost guaranteed to get it. So that's what we're shooting for this time. So um, basically nothing's changed as far as the plan goes. Just um, we have to open it up for public comment again and, and go through the whole process again. So if anybody has any questions, Feel free to ask now. Or... Just to maybe expand a little bit, and don't correct me if I'm wrong on this, but uh, expand a little bit on what you were saying, is that the, the, the grant, and you would, you would apply for other grants, and we were able to get enough money, so when the, this other grant came through and was okay, um, we were like $50,000 or so, around that figure um, under. So applying for this second grant, um, which almost guarantees that we would get it unless something dramatic occurs, Correct. then we would have enough money to take care of both of them. So. Correct. Okay. okay. So we have a resolution. I'll make a motion to approve resolution R15-2 for the DNR Trust Fund. Trust Fund grant for the canoe and kayak launch at the Hoffman property. Motion been made and supported to approve resolution R15-2 for the DR, DNR Trust Fund grant for the, the Hoffman property. And anyone have any questions or discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, do we have a roll call? Ms. Shore? Yes. Secord? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Bayer? Yes. Miller, yes. Gutierrez? Yes. Towson? Yes. Motion is carried. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, number four basically is the same because we've got two of them. One is the, known as the Hoffman, and this one is known as the Cass River. Again, we'll seek public input. Um, you can either do that right now here, or you can contact Bill or one of us. And I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna talk about this one real quick. This okay. one is the uh, the Cass River Trailhead. It's the. Uh, it's actually the old um, uh, Bridgeport Oil and Gas property, the BNS property down on the corner by Lake Fighter. Um, the DNA is the DDA has that uh, that land, and they're talking about putting it, turning it into a park, um, and we're applying for a DNR trust fund grant to help us with the process of that. Um, you can either contact myself or Steve Dobus, <coughs> the coordinator, about that. Thank you. Okay, then we'll have a resolution next on the agenda. Resolution R15-3. The NR Trust Fund grant application for the Great Forecast River Trail. I'll make a motion to approve resolution R. 15-3 for the DNR Trust Fund, Trust Fund Grant for the Bridgeport Cass River Trailhead Historical Bridge Site. Second. 
Motion been made and seconded to approve R15-3, resolution R15-3. Again, the DNR trust fund grant for the Bridgeport Cass River Trail is property. Yes. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Yes. Miller? Yes. Gutierrez? Yes. Secor? Yes. Townsend? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. <coughs> okay, next we're doing a real good part for me and the rest of us on the board and, and pros and everybody else is the oath of office for two new, <coughs> excuse me, uh, oath of office for two new police officers. Residents are aware, approved an assessment for fire and for police, and we promised that we would put on a couple of police officers uh, if we got that, so we're all excited tonight that we're going to be able to do that. So, if you could come forward, please. of the state of Michigan and that I will faithfully enforce the laws of this state that I will faithfully enforce the laws of this state and the ordinances of this township and the ordinance of this township and discharge the duties of an officer and discharge the duties of an officer of the Bridgeport Charter Township Police Department of the Bridgeport Charter Township Police Department to the best of my ability to the best of my ability and preserve protect and defend and preserve, protect, and defend the honor of the police department of the Charter Township of Bridgeport. The honor of the police department of the Charter Township of Bridgeport. Obeying all rules <coughs> and regulations. Obeying all rules and regulations. And carrying out all orders lawfully given me by my superior officers. And carrying out all orders lawfully given me by my superior officers. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome to the board, man. Thank you. 
I came to this best country in the world, 65 and 67. I went to Detroit and I applied. I was living in Detroit. I applied to be an officer. I got physical, everything accepted. They told me you have to go and learn spelling uh, for six months. Because I had two children at that time, I was working in General Motors. And I couldn't give up my job for six months or do something. Uh, so I decided not to do it. But this was one of my dreams. The reason I'm saying now, after all 47 some years, I'm proud and I always believe national police organization, if it's in a Bridgeport or it's all country and sheriff, if it's USA Sheriff or City Sheriffs, they are the organization that I believe they are the finest. And I'm, I'm very happy and proud that my grandson he, uh, he is part of that team. And God bless you.
it's really a good deal. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Make a motion to approve the purchase of a 2015 Chevrolet Tahoe for the police department with a cost not to exceed $34,058.71 as presented. Second. Okay, motion been made and seconded to approve the purchase of a 2015 Chevrolet Tahoe for the police department not to exceed $34,058.71. And this falls under the same thing. Um, what some of you don't maybe not realize, and, and I didn't know this until I got involved, is that the Tahoes or the police vehicles are not the same type that you and I would go to the car lot and buy. The suspension uh, is a little beefier and, and other things that go along with it. Um, Dave, was, we were talking about this last year, uh, and the 2015 came out with the four-wheel drive potential that wasn't there before in a police vehicle. Uh, one that's customized or modified for, for the police. So, plus the fact that we're getting two more officers. Uh, we've got the 2009 as our oldest Tahoe. Um, Sad that we had a couple accidents with that. But, and need it if, if we get if we didn't do this if we get a uh, vehicle down and we got people going to court we may not have enough vehicles to run two separate vehicles on the road and that kind of thing so it's something that was thoroughly discussed and uh, necessary get a smooth operation anyone have any questions nothing else i want to make a statement sure if i'm correct the Tahoes are more reliable, so less cost for us <coughs> on vehicles on the, the cars. Is that correct? Absolutely. I mean, even our oldest Tahoe, uh, the original plan was to run a patrol vehicle for five years. Um, our 2009 Tahoe is six years old. It still functions. We're starting to run into minor issues with it, uh, but we should still be able to keep that Tahoe on. Maintenance-wise, they're, they're well above any other vehicle out there uh, that can be utilized as a police vehicle. Thank you, sir. I'd like to make a comment also. Um, I think it should also be added that last year, I think it should be known the amount of money that was delegated to you that you didn't spend, that you saved, that you noted in our paperwork that is going um, I think that's a great job uh, that I mean basically we're getting a new vehicle for nothing because of the money you saved last year that you could have spent I want to thank you for that thank you yeah and, and just one more point um, the assessment money that was approved to the police department that was to hire two employees none of that money is being utilized for the purchase of this vehicle just so everybody understands that so. okay all those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Opposed, nay. Hearing none. It'll be really beneficial, particularly when you get to the, the heavy weather, the snowstorms, and whatever, and to have a four wheel drive vehicle available. So. Okay, and then number nine. Police Department Hazardous Materials no. Response. Police Department. Police Department. <laughs> Okay, may I have a couple of glasses? Uh, the fire department has this materials response technology. Make a motion to approve the purchase of the hardware and software upgrades for the fire department hazardous materials response technology with a purchase not to exceed $14,500. This expense will be reimbursed through the Region 3 Homeland Security Grant. Second. Made and seconded to approve the purchase of hardware and software upgrades for the fire department has this materials response technology. <coughs> now
had to exceed 14,500. Um, again, so everyone understands, this money will be paid out, but then the chief is going to be getting a grant for equal amounts, I believe. Sure. And we participate, us in about three other departments, we formed the county, the Saginaw County Hazardous Materials Team. And some of the equipment, including the trailers housed in Saginaw Township, we manage and house the technology piece of that, which is hardware and software that allows us to identify hazardous materials and then start establishing evacuation zones and things like that. It actually will take weather and predict what the chemical is going to do so we can start to, to react accordingly. So we manage that here as part of ours with Bridgeport. But the Region 3 grant through the Department of Homeland Security that's allocated by the state of Michigan, and there's 13 counties, by the way, that are in our region. And uh, they supply all of our team's equipment. So when we need to replace suits, they replace it. All of the equipment we have, we haven't had to spend a penny for that out of our general fund. And uh, so we're just at a point, we've done this before in the past. Um, County that was host that was a fiduciary for the grant. Uh, this time around, it's Aranac County. They would simply make the purchase, um, and then you would get the equipment. Well, there were some problems with that, and some people didn't necessarily play by the rules, and they didn't follow the state guidelines for making the purchases. So now what they're doing is they're making us pay for it, and then they reimburse us. Uh, it's already been approved through the region and through the through the state. We just need to to make the purchase, submit the proof of payment, and um, show that we met all the requirements and they them. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. All those in nay. Passes. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have the fire department. <laughs> motion to approve submitting grant applications for the police department and the governmental center to Pulse 3 Foundation for automated external defibrillators. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve submitting the grant applications for the police department and governmental center for the Pulse 3 Foundation for automatic external defibrillators. Discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Passes. required that we do that. Well, yeah. I said that. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing it for the audit. 
<laughs> okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. All those say nay. Okay. You can go commit whatever you got to do. All right. Accounts payable. I'll make a motion to approve check number 57876 through 58026 in the amount of $288,782.69 as presented. Second. Okay. Under accounts payable, motion been made second and to approve checks 57876 through 58026. The amount of $288,782.69 as presented. Any questions? I want a chance to look over there. Since I was a since I was a kid working at the station, they've always been a part of the community, and and they've always been very very um, very good people to work with. And I'm I'm really glad to see your really nice family here in, in support of your grandson tonight. It's, it's two way street, you know. You know, was good too. Yes, sir. And uh, this is part of the family. I have six children and 19 grandchildren. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and he's my oldest grandson. So many good things that uh, has uh, occurred during this meeting, I really can't elaborate on it. But it only tells me that Bridgeport is moving in the right direction. So we should be proud of the township that we live in. And, so, you know, talk it up, not that. That's it. Uh, Bill, thank you Center, um, thank you for offering our lobby as a Craigslist exchange point. Uh, I don't know if the audience knows about this. It was out, put out on constant contact. Um, I've done a change up once at Tim Hortons at Bay City and I was scared out of my mind. So knowing that you can come to the governmental center in our lobby and do an exchange in front of the police department door is to me comforting. So. Thank you for allowing that to uh, take place. Um, there's a festival meeting next week, so a festival's coming sooner than later. And uh, if anybody wants to come volunteer or hear what's going on with festival, this will be our fifth year, and it's go big or go home time. So uh, 
um, next Wednesday here, second floor at 7 o'clock. Um, I think the little library is really cool. Um, congratulations to Anthony Rick, er, Eric. And um, thank you, Rod, for the report on the building and zoning. I thought it was nice to see for a change to see that, um, how much money you're growing in your office. <coughs> Congratulations to the two new police officers. I'm happy that uh, citizens have uh, spoke up and put back to them what they deserve for the fire department to get their upgrades they needed. <coughs> and the commitment that we've had from the community has made it possible for us to have a safe fire department. I mean, there's, there's things in that fire department that were hazards. Those are going to be taken care of. To know that that building is going to get the needed repairs and upgrades is amazing. Um, the fact that we've got the, to, the money to have these officers is a blessing. So, proud of all the work that this community does. All our department has worked for us all, all the time. Thank you to all of them, and thank you for your nice presentation, your nice speech. That was very well heard. Thank you. We believe we are God love you. We do too. Keep the good work. Successful, and each year it gets more and more successful. Uh, grows every year. Um, I like to say that you know okay, the the way to eat an elephant is one one bite at a time, and and that's the kind of way we have to do things. We don't have obviously unlimited amount of, of money where we can just hey we'll take care of this and that and that. So we have to plan ahead and be chunk it put in place, getting toward the direction that we ultimately want to be. So I'm, I'm very proud to sit on this board to um, work with our manager that we do, that we have all good people, the department heads and stuff, our chiefs. I, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say congratulations to the two new officers too, but I'm um, really great, glad to have them. But I think things are going really well. Um, gosh, I, I guess if don't want to help make it better than just kind of get out of the way and let the people that are working on making it better make it better. So that's, that's all I got. Rose. Okay, I have just a couple things that you guys have not touched base on. Um, DEQ has mandated that all of the wastewater pump stations, um, lift stations, get upgraded 
right now, Dan has put out a pre-bid and actually had a meeting for the airport pump station, which is on the former Dixie Highway Airport. So that's coming. Um, Dan also has an open position that he's going to be posting at this plant for general labor. Our building administrator, Ron Whitley, is going to be taken to our next planning commission meeting, the final draft of the master plan. So hopefully we'll be able to bring that back in April is the hopes um, to approve that for you guys to approve. And baseball and softball registrations are open, so Bill's got that going right now. MDOT is going to start tomorrow evening. They'll have King Road blocked off, and they'll start with the demolition and replacement of the King Road overpass, and then they'll come along with the big pass. Um, that's all I have. Hearing not a motion to adjourn would be in order.